<laughs> Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Rod Favard after his second place finish at the 2024 Western States 100. How are you, Rod? Doing well. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, feeling all right after some uh, fast times on the track? Relatively, yeah. I'm walking, I'm eating. Yesterday was really rough post-race. Was it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, cross the line and straight to puking on the finish. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get there. there there's a, a good journey, not that long of a journey because it was 15, 14 hours and 24 minutes. Um, but I want to like go back in your journey a little bit. The, this is our first interview with you and we always like to find out uh, your story with uh, athletics or you know maybe specifically with running. Like uh, when did you get into sports or running? Yeah, I did cross country and track in high school, like everyone, but uh, I, I wasn't a standout whatsoever. Um, my PRs were not notable. I didn't go to college to run, um, but I fell in love with the sport and I decided to race marathons after high school uh, when I was in college for a couple of years. Uh, I kind of got boring doing alone and I missed that team environment. So I ended up uh, doing triathlon in, my, um, in the collegiate club program at UC Santa Barbara and um, got really into that, <laughs> got really into training for that. And uh, my coach was a very great role model and he actually coaches me today uh, for ultra running. But yeah, I uh, competed in college for two years and try, and then I went on to do Ironmans for another year and a half post-college. And um, then I started working full-time and could not train as much as Ironman athletes do. And uh, I always like to train at a really high level where I feel like I'm wasting my time. So I switched to ultra running, which <laughs> felt more free. <laughs> yeah, yeah much less of a time commitment than yes. pesky <laughs> you know. Ironman triathlons. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how long ago was that? When did you make the switch? 2018. So uh, a relatively long while ago. You've had six years yeah. and, and had a, a yeah. obviously a, quite a strong endurance base going into that yeah. time. Uh, did you ramp up pretty quickly with racing ultras or training for ultras or did you kind of dip your toe in your water and, uh, and build up from there? I ramped up quick. I, yeah, I went straight to 100K and uh, was training a lot, but the hours were low, but the, the volume for mileage was high, um, mm -hmm. relative to try at least. And um, yeah, I did my first 100K in San Diego at the Cuyamaca 100K. Um, I won and set a course record there and I guess didn't really understand at the time what a deep field means and what, you know, the local 100K means. So I, I thought I was pretty good at the sport and- uh, No offense, rats. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah true. <laughs> um, so I, I started doing more local ones, winning them, setting course records. And then I did my first very competitive one at the 2019 Black Canyon, where I ended up getting fifth place. Yeah. And that felt like you'd, you, you'd gone into the, a deeper field. Yes, yes. yeah, it felt hard. like a deep field. Was racing for a golden ticket, didn't happen. And then uh, a month later, ran the nine trails in 2019, which was that superstar packed field mm -hmm. uh, with all the Hoka athletes. And I finished fourth there on some home trails in Santa Barbara. And um, yeah, that's when I realized I could potentially be good at this and um, be racing in elite fields. Yeah. And things got uh, probably pushed back time-wise a little bit with the whole COVID year in 2020. Yeah. Um, how'd you find your way into Western States for the first time in 2021? Yeah, so I got off the, or I got um, off the lottery. I got onto the wait list for Western States in 20, for, for the 2020 race, mm -hmm. which then got canceled. Um, and then f go a year forward to 2021, I got the email probably in March before the race. And I totally forgot that my name was pulled off this wait list. And I forgot Western States was a thing after COVID year. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, wow, I guess I'm, I'm doing this. And uh, yeah, so I would think I was 36 on the wait list and got pulled in a few months before the race. So I started wow. training for it and um, yeah, got, got the stoke for it. But when did, how, like, when, <laughs> when in the year did you start actually training for Western States? In uh, well, I sort of started training in April of 2021 that year, like uh, two months before or three months before the race. I quickly got injured. So that got pushed another month. So I was training for about eight weeks before the race. Yeah. Which then maybe is not a huge surprise that uh, you didn't finish your first. Uh, I did not. Western no. States. No. Yeah. <laughs> that put some context <laughs> in it. Yeah. Like, uh, you weren't gearing up for that for, for a year and a half or something. Uh, I, I wasn't gearing up for it. I also didn't know what the race really entailed. I didn't understand how hot it gets here, especially that year. It was mm -hmm. like, a, what, 108 at the river or so. Um, 
didn't understand the downhills, didn't understand how to eat. So yeah, there's a <laughs> recipe for disaster truly. Yeah. Uh, and, and your progress with Western states kind of shows a, a very upward trajectory because you had the DNF, which understandable. Uh, then you had the 23 hour finish and a 16 hour and 15 minute finish more or less. And then 14, 24, that's quite a progression. Yeah. Uh, you pretty proud of that? I am. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love this race. I truly do. I, it's so easy to pick apart and understand where you need to improve on the course. So I think like picking up time like that, uh, it's not easy, but it's, it's easy to conceptualize where you need to pick up the time in mm -hmm. order to do it. And that makes coming back every year when you can extremely fun and extremely motivating. Yeah. Uh, was this year's race fun for you? Oh man, <laughs> fun's, a, fun's a strong word, but this year was, I've never been in this, this mental space that in a race ever that I was in this year. And that was racing from step one, except maybe in like a 50K or something. But I mean, like for a long ultra, 100K to 100 mile, there was no time for me to chill. And it's not like I went in the race wanting to do that. I don't know, the gun started and that's where my mind went. And I, like, I didn't feel a single emotion on the day. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel what fun is. I was, just, I was just out there racing every step and my mind was just completely zoned in, completely blocked out. I don't think I waved or said hi to anyone. I apologize for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was completely different, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, did you uh, cross the escarpment in, uh, in first? I did, which yeah. I felt like, oh man, I'm gonna get shit for this probably. <laughs> Had you not pretty more or less stuck the race, which you, let's be honest, you did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, you probably would have got some shit for sending the escarpment. Yes. Uh, people now sometimes get up to the top and win the race, but yeah. historically that was not the case. Well, to be honest, I felt, I felt bad for Jim. I don't know why I'm saying that, but. <laughs> Everyone's just keying off him and he's just, you know, he's just yeah. anyone else in the race, you know, he's just a runner, but everyone made sure they're right behind him. He started going slow and like, you know, sl slower than slow and everyone just started dropping back behind him too. I'm like, why guys? Like, if anything, I wanted to get in the front so I could have a clear single track on the, mm -hmm. in the high country and not have to worry about footing and can control the pace, which I actually took uh, what felt really chill and just felt like my pace when I crusted and was able to yeah. lead us. So yeah. you didn't, uh, there was no intimidation of like, not even on the escarpment, but like as you go forward and you're yeah. going back and forth like multiple times with Jim during the race. You're yeah. like, he doesn't pass you and you're like, oh crap, Jim just passed me, game over. Like you're not. Uh, <laughs> there was some of that, but <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> it, so I, I counted, there were, there, so when Jim and I actually started kind of, you know, battling, it was at Michigan Bluff, um, which I thought he got out of that climb way faster than me. And I thought he was out of that aid station way faster than me, but I rolled out of that aid station and then I heard some people running behind me. I figured it was just a film crew. And I looked back and there's Jim. I'm like, oh, and I like did like a few double takes. And I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess we're gonna run today together. And um, from there to Green Gate, which a few miles after that, he ultimately made the decisive move and passed me. We had 10 lead switches between each other. Yeah. Did you ever, but, were you ever running together from where, like, was it always just a pass or like, were there a couple minutes you're like uh, rolling together? A, a couple minutes, yeah. I would say after Forest Hill, no. It was just mm -hmm. passing back and forth, but um, dropping down Volcano Canyon before climbing up Bath Road, we, we were running that stretch together. We dunked in a river together and mm -hmm. Uh, he, he advised me to get fully wet, you know, he was giving some tips and <laughs> <laughs> you took them. Yeah, I took them. And then we ran the climb up together until the road, which he started to take off and got in force hill first. Yeah. Which you can't feel too bad about. No. Nah, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was it exhausting either like having to keep on that edge of effort or like, I can't imagine being passed 10 times by the same person mm -hmm. in a race mm -hmm. or for, I mean, I'll ask him the same thing, vice versa. Like, yeah. Yeah, it, it was exhausting. It was hard to tell if this was going to be the last time I saw him or not. And it, it, there's kind of this decision you have to make mentally of, am I going to fight or am I just happy with second place? And at the end of the day, I just kept my pace that I felt sustainable in that moment. And that eventually led to some passes. Um, but yeah, when he made that last move by me, it was... It, 
we were, we were climbing up the hill between um, Green Gate and Auburn Lakes Trails. It's not very steep. It's probably like a six to seven percent grade. Um, but I, like, I, I, I've never seen anyone run up a hill faster <laughs> what it felt like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this isn't, I'm doing what I can here and maybe he blows himself up before the finish, but wow, he looked strong here. Yeah. And I had to focus on myself at that point. So, yeah, were, were things yeah. getting a bit rough for yourself then? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't climbing quite as strong, um, which was kind of the theme of the day between me and Jim. I think I was descending a little bit better and he was climbing a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so I, I walk climbed or walk ran some of the climbs after Quarry Road. And I think that's where I lost a lot of time to Hayden behind me too. And yeah, and then I heard every aid station who was just making up some time. So. I, I was just focusing on myself and trying to keep second yeah. place at were that you, point. Yeah. Were you getting pretty worried? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, um, at, yeah I think there was a five minute, at, Ro or at uh, Point at Rocks, there was five minutes between me and Hayden, which he cut down from 10 minutes mm -hmm. at Green Gate. And I was like, okay, he has to run a minute per mile faster than me to catch me here. That's not gonna happen. And then? <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, well, and then I, I mean, I thought I had it and uh, got up to Roby Point and Tim, who was pacing me through. Tim Tolfson. Tim yeah. Tolfson was pacing me um, on, on the road section of Roby Point. Uh, Chris Brown paced me most of it beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and Tim, uh, Tim said, okay, do you want to go under Jared's time and be the second fastest person in Western States? I said, no, I just want to, I just want to take it in because I was hurting at that point too. And he's like, all right, buddy, let's take it in. And we make that final, final, very short bump that everyone hates after Roby. And Tim decides to look back and he sees Hayden's sea of white entourage behind us. And he's like, we, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it's half a mile from there. And yeah, just all out from there, but I was I was hating every moment. <laughs> and like you're yeah. on the straightaway together, literally the like. Yeah, yeah, we I we hit the track. Um, I I don't I I actually don't know. I don't know what's happening there. I was just like I need to go all out. So and yeah. you did. Yeah, uh, I mean <laughs> yeah. he I think talking to Hayden, he ran something like a five twenty three <laughs> last mile. So you would be. Oh my uh, god. You yeah. had to be sub six probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you, you cross the line and you're puking and yeah. <laughs> uh, you're happy you push that hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am extremely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I don't know what it means to be. I know what it means to be first. I don't know what it means to be second or third or what the difference is, but it felt like really important for me to get second place. And you yeah. feel like you got the best out of yourself yesterday. Absolutely. And there's yeah. nothing you can be more proud of than that, right? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What was your best memory from the day? Oh, hmm. Or just like a most memorable moment. It doesn't even have to be the best. Like what stands out from yesterday? Yeah, I think um, it was a painful moment, but going elbow to elbow with Jim up from the river to Green Gate. Yeah. Just throwing down. Throwing down. Mono a mono. Yeah. Um, yeah, just trying to trying to understand how he was feeling in the moment and what I needed to do here. And uh, I know he didn't take crew on the other side of the river, so I knew he was going to stop here. And I was just, I was curious if that was going to be my moment to go. And I thought it was. And God, the guy just has these second wins at UTMB at Western States that just are unbelievable, really. And uh, yeah, I... I, I'm super inspired by him. Nice. Yeah. What's next for you? Um, potentially. I mean, I'm signed up. We'll see if I can get training together and have a good summer. Uh, but I, I, I'm going to go to the Diagonal Defu, Green Raid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on Thank a you. tremendous run at Western States. Thank you. Yeah. Day to remember. Definitely. Take care. Yeah.